Krypton Chronicles. Chronicles. The Superman, Superboy, Superboy, DC Show. Hello, and you are listening to Krypton Chronicles, the Man of Steel sequel updates. I'm your host, Rennie Cowan. And I got a special guest star on here today, or I should say a special guest. His name is Jacob Rubenstein, and he is a webmaster of two popular websites on the internet. One of them is the unofficial site of Sarah Douglas, and the second one is the official Jack O'Halloran fan site. They're really good fan sites, so I would recommend all of you guys check that out. But how are you doing today, Jacob? All right. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I wanted to get, you know, a different perspective and I've known you for years and I thought, you know, Jacob would be a really great person to just bring on here and to talk about the sequel. And Jacob is also a huge fan of 3D Blu-ray movies. He has a huge long collection of 3D <laughs> Blu-rays. <laughs> yeah, so. you know. Superman set. Yeah, and Man of Steel is coming out on three on uh, Blu-ray in 3D too. Many different compilations, even. I think there's a French version, which is going to be loaded with extras. So. Well, um, Zack Snyder's done a lot of extras for his movies, so he's always been famous for that. And I wouldn't be surprised if down the road they release a director's cut special edition for it, like they did with uh, the Ultimate Edition for Watchmen. So. Right, right. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to all the special features that they're going to have on this Blu-ray. And cut footage, too. That's going to be a lot of fun yeah, to see. Absolutely. So what we're going to be talking about today is everything that's going on with the sequel of Man of Steel. We've heard and read lots of reviews about Man of Steel, about why people liked it, why people hated it. So we won't really get into that, but what we are going to talk about is the sequel. And that's enough to talk about because there's, there's fans that get angry over everything. And one thing in particular is the Ben Affleck casting <laughs> as Batman. Yeah. A lot of people are very, very unhappy about it, and, and they haven't even seen him in the role yet. Right. Um, well, first of all, uh, Michael Keane was famous for playing Batman, and there was a big uproar before the Internet you know, happened with him. In fact, even a lot of fans didn't even think Heath Ledger, who played Joker in Dark Knight, was a good choice either, and that was proven wrong as well. So it doesn't surprise me that people have mixed reaction to uh, Ben Affleck. Uh, for Michael Keaton, I wasn't really a fan of his either until he was Batman. So I actually went back and watched all of his other movies. So by the time you know Batman came out, I was like, okay, you know, works for me, you know. So um, I think a lot of people, you know, I would suggest them watching the Daredevil director's cut because um, that's actually a lot like Batman. It's like very dark, moody, and all that. So if you watch that and watch Hollywood Land where he plays an actor playing Superman, plus a few other surprises of casting in the Hollywood Land with uh, Mrs. Kent. So, um, you know, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, yeah. And I totally agree with you about Michael Keaton because that was such an unusual casting choice. No one expected that he would be Batman. I mean, he just didn't fit. I mean, it seemed like he was more of a comedy actor than anything. Yeah. So when they put him in the role, people were kind of apprehensive. But then once they saw the movie, they were like, hey, he's pretty good. And now, to a lot of people, Michael Keaton is their Batman. Right. And actually, he still is my favorite Batman to this day. Uh, I mean, with redo, you know, no disrespect to Chris Nolan's Batman and stuff, um, I actually prefer the Burton ones myself. So... Yeah, I, I really did like Michael Keaton as well. Certainly the first two films, Batman and Batman Returns, and Michelle Pfeiffer is, you know, Catwoman. Like, oh, yeah. she's the definitive Catwoman to me. You know, for Penguin, you know, and stuff. I mean, I don't know if a lot of people saw the uh, movie that uh, Keaton did. It was called Clean and Sober, and it was a very dramatic role. Uh, and it's on DVD. And um, so I would recommend it for people who... Yeah, and the movie Argo, which Ben Affleck recently did, was an excellent film. And I gotta admit, I was not really a huge fan of Ben Affleck. I mean, I could watch his movies and enjoy them, but after seeing Argo, I was like, you know, he is a really good actor. So he really surprised me in that movie, and and I'm looking forward to seeing Batman because I think he can do it. I think he's got the tools and the talent to do it. Yeah, actually, um, I was not a fan of Ben Affleck either, even in his early career. Um, it wasn't until uh, Dogma, the Kevin Smith movie, where I really saw him, you know, do some acting chops and all that, that gave me, uh, you know, like, okay, he's decent, you know, and then he did, um, he did Chase and Amy before that, but that was still good. But, um, actually his directing movie that he did was, uh, Gone Baby Gone. 
Right. Uh, it's been his picture. So, yeah. And also, he did Goodwill Hunting with Matt Damon, and that won two Oscars. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know? I haven't actually seen all of that, so I have to, uh, but I've heard good things about it. But I've seen some of his other films, uh, like the, he played Jack Ryan in Some of All Fears, um, you know, Daredevil, um, Armageddon, you know, a few others. So, um, right. but yeah. Yeah, and speaking of Kevin Smith, I, I kind of had to laugh when you bring him up because I read an article about him and he said something like Ben Affleck built a bat cave in his house, <laughs> or or in a house that he sold. He did have the house, but he sold it, and it was like the old school bat cave with the big bookcase, and you you know push a little secret button and it'd open up. And <laughs> yeah. Well, Right, right. So that's great. So we both agree that, you know, Ben Affleck could be a really good Batman. He'll probably surprise a lot of people. I mean, look at um, Joker. I mean, there was a lot of buzz about him and stuff and all that. And there was a lot of backlash against him as well. Um, and Hathaway for Catwoman. And I always thought she would do a good job, you know, and all that. So I, I was never worried. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no one had his own atmosphere when it came to Batman. So, but I thought it was good. It was different, you know. It wasn't campy. It wasn't like anything we'd seen before. I was fine yeah. with it. And then that's the same thing with the Man of Steel. I mean, the fact that they called the Man of Steel and not Superman is uh, to kind of, you know, make sure that it was separate and, you know, moving on and all that. So. Yeah. Exactly. I assume that because Batman's going to be in it, they're going to keep the dark flavor even into the sequel. The sequel of Man of Steel is definitely going to build us up to the Justice League movie. I mean, that's definitely where they're headed, yeah. without a oh, doubt. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, yeah. And even with uh, Man of Steel, I mean, it was a very different movie. Like, like it is, uh, you know, comparing Batman Begins to, you know, Batman 89 and all that. Batman, or, you know, a lot of people complain that Superman's more of a Boy Scout type character, but things are darker these days a lot of the comic books and stuff. So you kind of have to go with how it, you know, goes. You can't make the honor film again. So yeah. it's just as perfect as it was when it first came out. And they tried to do that with Superman Returns, you know. It was basically a tribute to Donner. And it's right. got to be, a movie's got to be its own thing. I mean, if you're just going to copy another movie and kind of give it a trophy and say, you know, we like this movie so much that we're going to make another movie and tribute to it, it's just, it's going to fail because people have moved beyond that and people want to see different things. Yeah. And maybe Ben Affleck will appeal to some of the old timers because he played George Reeves in Hollywoodland. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. <laughs>
yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, moviegoers that like movies and stuff and make it bad for everybody else. I mean, look at Star Wars, you know. So, right, right. Anything? Right. Because, you know, those fans are so hardcore and everything. Yeah, and you know, I mean, we've heard everything so far about the casting of Batman, the death threats, and people putting petitions up on the White House. I mean, it's just silly, you know? It's like you haven't even seen the movie yet. I would have to say the soundtrack to the Michael Keaton, the two Michael Keaton films, is unbeatable. I love oh, yeah, the soundtrack to yeah, those the films. Thing with, you know, Man of Steel. I mean, I know that they're. I, I give it, crop, you know, chops for trying to create a new theme for it, but to be uh, repetitive, you know, music. Right. You know, overall, um, it got really boring after a while. And that's why I would never use Hans Zimmer. No disrespect to just to Hans Zimmer fans, but. I would never have him as my composer for film. It did get a little while getting used to listening to that, you know, to the drums. I mean, he had the drums going, the same beat, and it makes you kind of feel like you're listening to techno, you know, after a while. It's the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. It's, like, it's like you're in a dance house. I have to give him, you know, a little leeway in some ways because there was no way he'd be able to pass the John Williams score. I mean, yeah, yeah. have an active dot or something to be able to do something like that. So, exactly. You know, it's like yeah, standing uh, up against a Donner. Or, or, like, I remember seeing I mean, in your interview with him uh, that best conference that said he didn't even want to do it. You know, they had to like, twist his arm to do it. So, <laughs> there you go. I don't blame him to go up against John Williams and all the criticism. And I mean, look at Ben Affleck, you know, all the backlash he's getting right. now. And the guy's just an actor. He's just an actor. He's getting paid for it. And he's also a fan. He's been a big Batman fan his whole life. So, I mean. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and Frank Miller, you know, he did a lot of Daredevil, and he also did The Dark Knight Returns, so, you know, the Batman okay. connection, so. I did in Zack Snyder. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I've seen most of his movies of Zack Snyder. I, uh, he's a very visual director. I personally think Watchmen is a better film. I enjoy that immensely. It's very, very um, well and, done. You know, um, yeah, do you see the director's kind of Watchmen? Yeah, I've seen yeah. both. <laughs> Got him on DVD. Oh. I mean, Blu-ray. Right. Sorry. I think Frank Miller and Zack Snyder work really well together. I mean, there's 300. Yeah, and there's the uh, sequel coming out next year. So yeah, the sequel. Should be interesting. There's a lot to look forward to in this sequel. Batman vs. Uh, Superman. We don't know if that's the official title yet, but according to verbiage from Zack Snyder, Batman and Superman will be foes. They're going to duke it out in this movie. What do you think? Exactly. 
And I think that if they are going to duke it out in the sequel, that they should just go all out. It should be the best Batman and Superman fight ever. It should be that entertaining. <laughs> if that's well, the direction yeah, they're going to go in. <laughs> Another point is that no kryptonite was in the first film. There was no kryptonite at all. So Batman is going to have to do something in order to fight Superman because he's a human being. There's just no way. Yeah, the prequel comic book to Man of Steel kind of insinuated that she'll appear into the sequel. So we don't know yet, but if they start casting someone that looks like Kara Zor-El, then... Yeah, and the rumor is that Timothy Dalton is the runner-upper. I think that would be a good choice. He would also be a good choice, because he's got a huge following, and I think he's kind of charming anyway. He's a good actor. Yeah. And he would bring... Right. And there's another rumor that Lex Luthor is going to appear in the sequel and that Brian Cranston has snagged the role, but it hasn't been confirmed, but it's been all over the Internet. It's kind of been an explosive rumor. It just became such a huge rumor. People were believing it. Um, it, it even fooled me when I first read it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're kind of together in the reboot. Yeah, so it makes sense to do that in Man of Steel uh, 3. I think that's a great idea. You know, I mean, Smallville took advantage of it in the later seasons. They just started bringing in tons of DC characters, and the fans loved it. I think oh. that's a good idea. I think because that's where Superman comes from, the DC universe. So why not? Yeah.
And we know that Marvel is pushing DC into the direction that it's taking because, I mean, they're just going to whip DC's butt if they just keep letting them shell out these franchises with throwing all their major characters into one movie. And, you know, and they just see all the profit they're making. And it's like, well, why isn't DC doing that? Why? What are they so afraid of? What Are they trying to make another Donner classic? You know, I mean, there's no problem with doing that. That's a good idea. But, um, again, it's, it's, a it's a business. And even Chris Nolan is being put in that position now. He had to approve the Flash appearing on um, the Arrow TV series. Um, he's got to approve all that too. Yeah, I like that series. That was actually a really good series. I got it on DVD. There's actually some really, really good effects in that show, too. For I mean, for the year that it came out on, I was like, wow, this is good stuff. It's just like yeah, Superboy. I've seen it myself, but I like the cast in it, so. so right. Yeah. Fantastic. And we will see Flash now on Arrow, so um, yeah. who knows? Maybe what do you think we'll. Of Arrow? I watched part of the pilot. I didn't get into it, so I kind of just left it alone. It got approved so, for a I... second season, so I think they're going to start bringing more and more DC characters into it yeah. um, to kind of yeah, get more views. Right. So, watch all the, you know, movies and all that. Early next year, they're going to start shooting Man of Steel sequel in 2014. Right. And they've picked various locations. Detroit, Michigan will be Gotham City. It's been announced, okay. which I think yeah. is a good location. And it's it's good that they're shooting in the United States, too. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, well, they filmed the original Batman movie over in the U.K. And then brought everybody, uh, or, or most of everybody, back to L.A. and filmed Batman uh, Returns. Forever and PNR in LA. So, um, so yes and no. I always had an issue with Owens Films of the Gotham City because it was really in Chicago. And, but actually, from what I've read, that New Jersey was actually supposed to be Gotham City. You know, so it was close to New York and Manhattan, where Metropolis was. So that's kind of like the uh, location thing. When I watched uh, Man of Steel, I didn't really notice it looking like Chicago. I mean, it actually looked more like New York. And even Dark Knight Return or uh, Dark Knight Rises looked more like uh, New York as well. Right. So yeah. So back Detroit, I think they need the business, of course. So maybe it'll you know, help. And they're giving them some huge tax breaks, from what I heard. So and they yeah. want the jobs and the business there, so it'll work out. Also, I think Boston would have been a good location too for Gotham. It's kind of dark. I was just there recently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very true. But, Very um, true. Unless they hired. New Jersey would probably be better. But yeah. It was actually, I think that's where Bob Kane was born, and that's why he created Gotham City as a substitute for. Um, exactly. Well, I think that's all the time we have here for the update. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank it. you very much for inviting me. I appreciate it. It's great talking it. to you. Very good discussion. Yeah. Please visit Jacob's websites. Um, he has two of them. And the one of them is the unofficial site of Sarah Douglas. You can go to that at www.angelfire.com backslash CA4 backslash Sarah Douglas. The other one, you can go at www.angelfire.com backslash CA6 backslash Jack O'Halloran. The one note that I wanted to say to the fans is that they, uh, I do have the mailing address for the fans, and they do receive the mail, and they do receive on um, and all that so Jack gets a lot of mail Sarah gets a lot of mail it might take time to get a response but just to know that the fans are getting you know the fan mail there 
and you run the official site for Jack O'Halloran. I think that's fantastic. And also to give uh, a plug on Jack's book, he wrote this terrific book called Family Legacy. Um, you guys might want to check that out. It's an excellent book, and he talks about how the mob has been in his family history. So it's based on a true story. It's a really, really good book, so you might want to check that out. But we're all looking forward to the sequel and how this Batman versus Superman thing works out. And the new casting choices in Krypton Chronicles will keep you updated on that with some new guest stars. Keep listening, and until next time, we'll see you. Chronicles, the Superman, Superboy, DC Universe, Internet Radio Show.